So yes, uh, we exchanged stories immediately because everyone got down to finding out how did they eject, what happened. And one of the pilots had ejected on the 16th, which was one day before the ceasefire. So from him, we came to know all the details on the Western Front, how we had hammered them from right from Rajasthan, right up to Srinagar. All the air bases were successfully, uh, had successfully launched massive strikes and we had captured 5,000 square miles of territory. Now, I must later on tell you about this aspect. When I talk, come to the release from Pakistan, I will tell you that how disappointed we were, um, you know. With Wahiduddin, we continued life every day. We would uh, be given after breakfast. After breakfast, we would be taken to this room. We would continue to exchange stories. And we had nothing to read or write. So here is something that all of you must learn. Or if your children are in the armed forces, they, they must know about this. And that is, it is called intelligence decay. For months together, if you're confined in a room and you're not given anything to read or write, my manifestation of intelligence decay was, I am a science student and my father made us study English literature separately. He was a very tough chartered accountant with the Imperial Bank of India. So it came in very handy. Because later on in the Air Force, I was called a man of letters. And whatever I used to write used to be, you know, read everywhere and sent up to AOC and C and all and things like that. Anyway, I started forgetting how to spell words. This came as a great astonishment to me. And sometimes, even till today, I forget either the I come before the E or the E before the I. And I have to check with my wife sometimes. So please don't forget that you must keep yourself mentally occupied. And I did that. I started, you know, scratching on the walls, mental. We had a subject called mental arithmetic in school. And I must thank my school and my maths teacher for that because it came in very handy. I started multiplying numbers. I found that nine times table when I recited Nine into four is nine four. The, you know, you add up the answer. Nine fives, 45. Add up the answer. Five and four makes nine. Four nines, 36. Six plus three is nine. So I gave it a name, something like symmetrical, numerical. Then I started, uh, you know, fiddling around with digits in my head because there's nothing else to do. So we continued life like this. Everybody experienced some sort of decay. And we started complaining to the International Committee of the Red Cross that we must be given. So I think they put the pressure on. But here's a very important part of the story of the internment. I think it was 3rd July. Vaidudun, who would not give us anything, uh, would not give us anything, suddenly walked into the room and he was a tall, big Pathan. And uh, he had his hands behind his back and suddenly he pulled out Pakistan Times and right headline, very sad headline for us. India returns 5,000 square miles of territory, 93,000 prisoners of war to be released. We were so disappointed, so angry with Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Not one word. Not only did we give that 5,000 square miles in the Shimla summit, but we also handed over the Hajipir Pass, which till today is unforgivable. You know, somehow we should fight it and get it back, uh, along with POK, which we lost long ago. You know, it's unforgivable that you do something like this. After so many soldiers laid down their lives and so many men from our country who martyred their lives to gain that much territory. We should have bargained with them. We should never have given it back. And for every little problem we cre create from that territory, we should have harassed them. They sh we should have kept their prisoners of war till all our 54 missing pilots and, and you know, men are, are returned. It's unforgivable. 
and till the, today i feel really angry about this and uh, very emotional as well so why do then comes there and boasting and uh, sort of antagonizing us oh you see how we are we are great diplomats you say you have won the war look at us we have won the war we are getting back all our territories and our prisoners of war uh, we had a laugh we pulled his leg we did whatever we could short of abusing him uh, in his face anyway here is at this very moment after he left the newspaper and went away we all read it and that evening before we were taken away from that room and locked up as per procedure in our individual solitary confinement cells that evening we in hush hush tones we decided we have to escape because india has forgotten indian politicians have forgotten about us it's our duty to escape it is our duty to our service and to our country damn the politicians but we are going to escape so the very first meeting was held at the end of that week the week ending 3rd july and we realized that there was a decision to be taken and so wing commander bani koilo along with squad leader ds jaffa now ds jaffa was excuse me he was the staff officer to the chief he volunteered to fight in the war the chief was grateful enough to let him go and he was also with bani koilo and they used to have a private chat before any decisions were taken so <clears throat> it was decided that three able bodied people bachelor i was married i was able bodied but i was i mean it was decided that none of the able bodied i mean none of the married people will be allowed to consider even if you want to do it it was not allowed so the bachelors then were harish singh ji dilip parulka and of course gary grewal so these were the three and we had vs chatty also uh, as a bachelor unmarried but one person had to stay back and we we found that the room where we were meeting every day was the ideal room if we could dig a hole in that room you're out in the compound of the recruiting office which is a huge uh, maidan with a small building and once we dig a hole you're in that large sort of a garden and that garden abuts the national highway so it was a perfect setup and now this was july in the meantime very quickly i'll tell you that i befriended one of the laskars his name was orangazeb and we were also entitled to a salary as a prisoner of war it was the equivalent of 22 swiss francs we fought for it and finally mr bablon made sure we got it so we were getting 47 pakistani rupees which is slightly stronger than the indian rupee and that was enough to buy little tidbits of food people who wanted cigarettes used to bribe orangazeb i used to get it for the being the junior most i was allowed to <laughs> and being fit eventually i was allowed to have my way and uh, uh, befriend the laska so from the laska we learnt a lot of things we learnt that we are right on the national highway and the highway goes straight to peshawar and next to peshawar is the border with with afghanistan and uh, all that information we had we were slowly getting writing it down and all these papers we would stitch it in the back of our collar so how did we get stitching material well quickly i will answer that in the third month of our internment we got our first international committee red parcel uh, red cross parcels in that there was all this little little stitching equipment biscuits and small small things which of course the attractive things were all stolen by the pakistanis and they sent us whatever they didn't need to steal 
and the letter the first letter came across in, after three months and uh, then i heard from my wife that she had not left halwara she stayed back she did a lot of cooking for the other pilots and for the missions and then eventually after the war she left because she was alone and uh, staying in a house alone in that pul sudhar area where there is no civilization at all in halwara was not advisable she was, she was asked to leave by the station commander's wife so anyway that is how we got stitching material and gradually when we got the newspaper i was very interested in music and we would do some sing songs and i used to sing so i was encouraged by uh, the team leader in commander bani koilo to ask for a radio so i asked uh, wing commander why did then i said i'm very fond of music uh, would you consider giving us a radio he said okay i'll give you but no listening to the news you will only listen to music i said i promise you that and we used to put it at the win- on the window sill and listen to music but whenever he was not there we would remove the batteries it had eight batteries and the needles that we got stitching needles using two wires which we smuggled in we magnetized the needles and when we stitched a stitch button on it you know what a stitch button is now those press button so we stitched that onto a needle and pivoted it on another needle and it used to swing north so we knew how did we know the direction it was north well all the flights civil flights coming into peshawar we knew where they were coming from i'm sorry into coming into ravalpindi we knew they where they were coming from and we had a rough idea of the direction so we knew that that needle is actually showing true north so that needle we took it out and we pushed it inside the rear end of a ballpoint pen into the ink and that ballpoint pen was preserved very carefully and all this was being done for the final escape date and uh, then we started stitching clothes the local salwar kameez and we started growing beards so all of us started growing beards so that nobody would be singled out as being suspicious like that we did a lot of preparation a lot of preparation there was a playground outside and it had a iron peg so one day we stole that peg and that's what we used to dig we stole a couple of forks the fork we kept on rubbing 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 against the wall collect the dust put it in our pockets flush it down into the indian style toilet and get rid of the thing and systematically we started removing bricks one by one and in the evening and night we would put it back so throughout the night digging daytime also digging with two people keeping watch four people playing cards other music creating noise all that so we managed to create a hole by the end of uh, when was it sub so within a month and a total 40 days we took to dig that so we dug it and we put all the play, uh, bricks back we had stuffed paper and and le- allowed a blanket to drip mind you every every second or third day that ro- a room used to be swept but we would so carefully sit on the beds three four people so that the orange sahib when he sweeping we'll tell him okay idhar chhod do and uh, you know uh, idhar kuch nahi hai and that sort of stuff and he would <laughs> a sweep and go away and moreover we were bribing him so giving him poor fellow he was really poor they were so poor we have not seen such poverty at all and uh, you know he had pyria on his teeth and he was a registered lascar of the pakistan air force can you believe that how badly they were treated so there was no value for any life other than the service uh, martial law types uh, a very really stark contrast between india and our men and our civilians and our way of life and our thoughts and our patriotism for our country oh i found all of that completely absent on the other side it was a it was just uh, i mean the country today is exactly what it reflected it would be in those days 
because nobody cared for anybody so yes so built up for the for the escape and 